All right, so now we'll open it up for questions or comments. So if anyone have any questions or comments. Hold on, let me get to this mic. Hulk, turn up. Okay, uh, my question is, like, is there anything to be said about looks like in the Bible? Because, <clears throat> like, that guy, he, he was, like, very attractive, and that woman sort of accused him of rape, and she was lusting over him. So, I guess my question, to an extent, is, like, is good looks like a blessing or a curse? Because it seems like it leads to pride and problems a lot of times. Okay. All right. <laughs> good looks. Uh, good looks of blessing or curse. Well, I'm, let me just say this. Uh, it depends on where a person is spiritually. The Bible doesn't go a whole lot of, into a whole lot of detail about beautiful people and things like that. Uh, we know that the Bible says David was a handsome person. Uh, Saul was, uh, Joseph, you know, and, and but it doesn't go into a whole lot of detail. The Bible says that Sarah was beautiful, that even at the age of 60, she was still a desirable woman, which is what caused Abraham to be deceptive, you know, in saying that she was uh, his sister instead of his wife, even though she was his biological sister, he was still being deceptive because he was withholding the, the fact that they had gotten married, you see. And so, um, the Bible doesn't say whether or not uh, good looks are a curse because the fact of the matter is God made us all different and he's given us all different tastes. And so it doesn't go that much into detail because what's beautiful to one person may not be to another person. You know, over the years, I've had friends, you know, like most of us have, especially men, I've had friends ask me, so how do you think this person look? You know, talking about female. How does this one look? Or how do you think that one look? And it's hard for me to judge how beautiful someone is until I know them. Because you can have somebody that looks pretty on the outside, uh, but that attitude, it's just, it'll just, it'll kill. It, it'll kill what looks good on the, on the outside. And I, how many of us have ever experienced that? When you first see someone, they may look attractive, but when you get to know them, it just, that, they know, I mean, it's like their face have completely changed, you see. And so, really, I think the closer we get to God, the, the more we begin to look at people the way that God sees them. This flesh is going to get old. It is really nothing but dust. It's dust. And so no matter how God has formed it on the outside, if that heart isn't right, it, it doesn't matter what that dust looks like. And you can dress it up. You can put makeup on it. If, if inside is dirty, outside is dirty. Especially when you see people the way that God sees them. Now, I understand what you're saying about, you know, other people, how other people look now, you know, as far as looks, it, they're, they're, being, they're being a curse. I imagine to most women, because I think, women deal with this more than men to most women it could be that way but of course now my question is this now I just have to say it some women complain about the attention that they get but the question is are you bringing that attention on yourself you may not like a man barking at you but how are you presenting yourself to that man you know, this Bible says, Jesus said in the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew, that if a man look upon a woman to lust after her, he has committed adultery in his heart with her. Now, I want you to catch that word, with. That means when a woman goes out of her way to look attractive. And it's funny, I think we were just talking about this the other day. If a man is looking at that woman and lust after her, she's just as guilty as he is. Just as guilty. That's Bible. 
he says he's committed adultery with her. So it ain't just him lusting. So you can't make yourself. Now, here's the thing. And I've, I've heard women say this. I, I just like looking nice for, for my husband. The only problem is you going to work eight hours a day. And when you get home, you turn into a rag. <laughs> so who are you really looking good for? <laughs> He's the one got to deal with them rollers and everything else. <laughs> I heard somebody say some years ago, women really dress for other women. It's competition. You see that? And, and so, it's one of those things that women have to, and men too, because I imagine there's, you know, main men nowadays as well. But it's one of those things we have to be careful with as believers. Let's not be so concerned with trying to deck the outside. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with a person fixing themselves up or looking nice or anything like that. But I'm telling you, there's a spirit out there. There is a spirit out there that's got women looking in the mirror and not seeing the beauty that they are. Which makes them go overboard with trying to dress that outside of. The devil shows a woman what he wants her to see in the mirror to make her go overboard. You see? And so when that takes place, she feel like she have to go overboard to try to, you know, fix herself up, fix herself up, and things like that. And then when she go out in public, she got men gazing at her, looking at her, and it bothers her, it bugs her, but you're the cause of it. So you can't, you can't bring that attention on yourself and then get mad because you got attention. And what you have to ask yourself is, why do I feel the need to do that? Adulterers are not going to heaven. There's not one adulterer that's going to make it there that's unrepentant. I put it that way. And it doesn't matter. And some of you, I think you may have gotten that, that text message that my wife sent out about the diva in church and how women dress nowadays and things like that. And I'm telling you, We, we have to be careful. You can't. My wife used to say, you know, she had this saying, and I imagine she must have got it from somewhere, how some folks, they throw stones and then hide their hands. You can't be mad at the attention you're getting and, and then try to act like you didn't have anything to do with it. You know, the book of Proverbs says, that an adulterous woman is like a woman that eats food and then wipes her mouth and say, I've done nothing wrong. In other words, that woman, that woman that's out there in tight clothes, out there in revealing, in, in revealing clothes, when that man lusts after you, God is not going to excuse you for it. Yeah, he's going to get that man, but you're going to get yours too. If you're bringing that attention to yourself, and I'm telling you, this world is full of them, full of women, calling men thirsty. And I say, you're starving for attention. What is it on the inside of you that's got you that way? I'm telling you, there's something wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. You see that? I, I know folks say, you know, you hard on women, but I'm telling you, and that's on anybody. We can't, we, if we're going to live this life, we have to live it according to God's word. Do you know in the book of Proverbs, it talks about a woman that has on the attire of a harlot? You don't have to be out there sleeping around to have on that attire of a harlot. It talks about the attire of a harlot. So 
So you can be just as holy as you think you are. But you put on the same attire that harlots wear. I know folks ain't, they ain't, this ain't tasting good. But it's, it's God's word. This Bible tells us how to dress modestly. I, I'm a, and I'm going to share this with you, brother. Some years ago, when I first started preaching, I used to have my little hairdo, you know, the little ramp, you know, the back of it low, and then the top, it goes up like that. I, I never did get enough courage to dye my hair, you see. But I had my little ramp like that, you know. How many of you remember that? <laughs> yeah. And, I, you know, honestly, I didn't think much of it. And I would cut my hair, you know, I would, I would grow my own hair, cut my own hair, and I would be in the mirror just looking, you know, just making, trying to make sure everything is in place. And I'm going to tell you, just the same way you hear me talking is the way the Lord spoke it to me. He said, if you don't get out of that mirror, I'm going to break the teeth in your mouth. And you may think, well, that's a little harsh. Do you know where the devil started his fall at? He got caught up in how he looked. He wasn't just out there just clubbing and doing everything he's big and bad. And what began his fall was the way he looked. The Bible makes it clear. God made him a beautiful angel. In fact, the most beautiful angel. And he got caught up in the way that he looked. And I don't know if we can imagine it, but according to the word of God, he had instruments. Not only was he beautiful, but he had instruments embedded in his body. Several of them. So that when he walked, his body played music. Now that's where they get the idea from that he was a choir director. The Bible don't say that he was a choir director. How many of us have heard that? The devil was a choir director. No, the Bible don't say anything about him being a choir director. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just said that he had instruments embedded in his body. God made him that way so that when he walked, as he stepped, the music played. So, but he got caught up in his beauty. Now listen. His pride in the way he looked took him from that to flat out rebelling against God to sin. And we see the fruit of where pride in looks can take you. Everybody that's out there in that graveyard today is there as a result of the devil bringing temptation to mankind. And where did it start? with looks with looks and so from that day to this I made it a point not to get caught up now I wouldn't I didn't think I was anybody that looked good or anything like that I was just in the mirror trying to shake my hair up and, and, and think but I'm telling you when the Lord spoke that to me he shook every bone in my body and that's all he needed to say to me about that that's all you see and so we get caught up People get caught up in the way they look. And, and I'm going to tell you, I feel sorry for people. I look at them when they're they 30 and they all caught up in themselves. And then when they turn 70, I don't know where they're going. They gonna, in other words, if you're not happy with the way you look, before you put on makeup, before all of these things, the devil is going to have you miserable when you get older. As we continue to age, we're going to look our age. And there's nothing wrong with that. But some folks, they hate, I mean, they hate aging. They hate time. You see, but those are people that, that, that are not happy. And I'm going to tell you where it comes from, insecurity. If you show me a female out there that's got to show her body parts, I'll show you a very insecure female very insecure that's insecurity I don't care how the devil got you thinking it is you may think you proud and you know you look but in reality it's insecurity we had a lady going to our church some years ago who always wore hats and she's almost 40 years old wearing hats not that anything was wrong with wearing a hat but her husband let us know that it was because when she was in the sixth grade Somebody said something about her forehead. Yeah. 
over 20 something years ago and, and still wearing hats behind it. So here's my thing. If you don't allow the devil to plant those seeds. I had people talk about me growing up. You know, I was, when I grew up, it wasn't in to be dark skinned. Not on my side of Louisiana anyway. I wasn't going out trying to bleach my skin. I'm going to be who God made me. And I'm only concerned with what the person who he made for me thinks about it. You see that? Now, that, that, now that's when you get some peace. You see. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Nothing wrong with looks. Just don't get caught up in it. Just don't get caught up in it. If God made you beautiful, I can promise you, it, it starts here first. It starts here first. How many of us experienced when we were growing up, you know, and still kind of young and naive, we may see somebody that may not look as attractive on the outside, but the more we get to know them, the more we like them. Then all of a sudden, they become the most beautiful person to you. That's, that, 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 that's something that you can hold on to there. You see, and I'm telling you, I feel sorry for women that that go out of their way to for, for their appearance, and then get mad when they attract dogs. Get mad because they're attracting dogs. In other words, a man is going to mistreat them. And then, of course, my question is, what bait are you fishing with? Don't get mad at what you're catching. Because that's the bait you're using. You see that? So you can't... Don't put yourself out there. You want a man to respect your mind? Show him your mind. The reason why you're attracting the type of people that you're attracting is because of the bait that you're using. You can't get bad if a man only wants you for your body, if that's all he sees. And I pray that women get to a point where they start to think more of themselves than flesh. It's much more to you than that. You see that? It's much more to you than that. Amen.